Thank you. Thank you uh, for the invitation. Thank you for, uh, you know, uh, share with you some uh, information. You already heard uh, most of the things that we are concerning in uh, looking at the city and geography about, you know, the artifacts and so on. And, I, and in my presentation, I will actually probably summarize all the things that are already underlined uh, uh, because I think everybody is using uh, this new technology. It's having the same trouble in the interpretation. You know, one of the uh, things that uh, usually the, uh, you know, uh, instrument companies are pushing, it's, uh, you know, it's very easy to get. You know, it's six seconds, you get an image. Unfortunately, uh, it's true, it's taking probably a little bit more to getting a fluorescent or a ICG and geography. But then the interpretation for fluorescent and ICG is much, much shorter than not, uh, you know, uh, than not a, an interpretation of uh, an angio CTs. And you already heard the artifacts first. Now, these are my disclosure and uh, probably the most important disclosure is that I'm a multi-imaging supporter. So you, I can be biased by the fact that I still like to see all the other images, modalities to interpret and, and do a, a differential diagnosis. So with the angio -CTs. not more than that. So why Heidelberg is not ready? You know, it's, uh, you have already, yeah, come on. Just putting some numbers and that's it. Of course, uh, you know, it's, um, and in fact, uh, you know, the first uh, um, Angio CT was obtained with a, a time domain of CTs by the Caltech group in, uh, by Scott Fraser and his uh, group. And uh, so it, it doesn't mean to have a, 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 a new instrument to get uh, an Angio CTs, even if, if your speed is higher, you get a, probably an easier uh, way to get. So what I understood from uh, the Angio CTs is that uh, you have at least two time points, at least the commercial available instrument have only two time points. So if you uh, see something that moves in the vessel and you see in time one and time two, you get an image. If you have uh, uh, something that it's uh, uh, moving too fast, you, you take time one and there is no image, time two there is no image, and so you don't get an image. But remember that it could be also the opposite, that if it's too slow, so you get uh, time one, uh, you know, a, an image, but time two is not getting any image, and so you don't have an image. So the other thing is that you have to remember that it's, uh, it's true, it's obtained by something that moves in the eye, but the image that you get is a still frame image. It's like having, a, you know, a Venus phase of a fluorescent or of ICG, where you don't understand which is the artery and which is the vein. By the way, that is a, it's a, a Heidelberg uh, uh, angio B scan of a flow image that is very useful to interpret the images. And actually, I learned a lot just looking at uh, the angio B scan. And uh, right now, it's the only one that has a, uh, it's available uh, in, in, you know, almost in the market that shows the angio B scan. Otherwise, you have a structural CT with some uh, red lines that are showing, you know, the, the flow. And that is the, you know, the, the other uh, structural CT. The other important thing is that uh, you have always to remember that the light that you use for getting a structural CT is the same light that you use uh, with uh, uh, for angio CTs. So the limitation of the penetration, for example, of light with a structure, you have exactly the same with functional, uh, with, uh, sorry, with uh, angio CTs. So uh, Jan shows uh, before a, a series of angio CTs, and these are all the angio CTs that are available. Now, when we speak about uh, fluorescent and geography, at maximum we speak about two different uh, uh, imaging. You know, the uh, normal fundus camera and the confocal uh, uh, SLO images, but not more than that. Here, when we actually speak about uh, OCT and geography, we actually speak about many uh, possibilities. 
And uh, just to give you the idea, the, there are four OCTA methods, so the speckle variance, the amplitude decorrelation, the phase variance, and also the combination between the amplitude decorrelation and the phase variance, like for example, Zeiss and uh, Nidec are using. And then there are two different averaging uh, methods for the images that you get with a different type of, uh, of modalities, so the split spectrum or the volume averaging. So it's not only one OCT angiography. And in fact, if you compare you know, the, the same patient taken with a different type of machine and different type of algorithm, you actually get not exactly the same image. These are the superficial and deep, uh, but if you go to the, to the uh, choroid and uh, choriocapillaries, you have even more differences. So, and for a choroid and vascularization, what you see here, again, the appearance, even if you take the same slab, the same location, can be different. And the big advantage of, of, uh, of course, of the uh, angio CTs compared with angiographies, in particular speaking about the choroid uh, with the ICG, is that you have higher contrast. So it's, it's easier to catch a normal choroid vascularization. Now, I told you that it's, uh, you image what is uh, actually uh, move inside the vessel. So you don't get an image of anatomy like you get with, an, with a, in a, a normal angiography. And I tried to explain. So this is a, a really poor guy with a terrible occlusion and, uh, and a, a new vessel over here. Now, if we look at the fluorescein, you actually see the new retinal vessel and uh, the vessel that probably are closed. Now, if we overlap an angio CTs, we actually see that uh, we see the vessel, but probably the size of the vessel is larger. What we actually see, we look at the lumen of the vessel and not the anatomy of the vessel as we are used to see with a normal angiography. So also the size can be a little bit different from what we expect because of this. Now, the other thing is that uh, you probably uh, you are aware of uh, new drugs, uh, the anti-PDGF, that probably act on uh, uh, reducing, you know, uh, acting on the endothelial cells, reducing the choroidal vascularization. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't think it's uh, the best way to know if you have a decrease in choroidal vascularization if using angio CTs, because the only thing that you know is that if it's perfused, or not perfused. And here is a, actually a patient that was uh, treated with uh, the combination anti-VGF and anti-PDGF. And of course, yes, uh, you probably don't have uh, the uh, active part here, but uh, who knows if this area is really, it disappear or it only is not perfused. So speaking about artifacts, uh, this is the OptoView, and uh, usually when you get uh, an OptoView image, you, you can actually get uh, some lines, and those lines are actually movement of the eye. And uh, since something is moving, you know, the, uh, you know, the instrument is uh, recognized as a, a line, as a vessel. Of course, the software is uh, able to put together and, uh, and, uh, you know, and uh, cancel uh, most of those, but uh, if a patient fix, have not a good fixation, and fix in one, the horizontal image, and then move the fixation in vertical image, and it's putting together, you have such a mess. And you see that one, the horizontal, is much better than not uh, the combined uh, um, you know, images. So even if uh, there is an artifact removal here, you actually create more artifact because uh, of the fact that the fixation moves. Uh, then we have uh, the blinking, that is, uh, of course, it's a, a black uh, line, and the black line can actually uh, be, you know, uh, combined with the software, and you have such an artifact that we, and my colleagues uh, call the tartan artifact, so it's like similar to. So, but there are other, uh, you know, um, 
artifacts that are not due to the movement. This is actually a, a, a Heidelberg, uh, the early uh, release of the Heidelberg software, and you see that there are some lines that are not white because there is a you know a tracking system, so it's very nice for that. So you don't get an image if it moves too much VI, uh, as usual for for uh, for um, um, Heidelberg, but these are actually due to the wrong, uh, you know, um, uh, segmentation. So also the wrong segmentation can actually create some artifacts. So you have to think about, you have to go and uh, look at all the, like we did uh, for the structure of CT that we, in a volume, we, we look at all we scan. Here we have to look at all B scan and not only that. I will show you also. Now, it's not an artifact, but uh, uh, we actually see that there is a, for example, this is a retinal vessel, and you see that it's projecting, the projection artifact that we already heard, but all of a sudden there is an area that is called avascular that is not showing you know, the, the projection, but it's reappearing after that. Why this happen? Okay, we have to, and just to explore the, the images, you know, there. Now, we have to go back to the structure of CT. And in particular, uh, you remember that uh, was very uh, um, well shown that uh, if you tilt the acquisition, you start to see the end fiber layer, and this is due to the fact that the end fiber layer are not uh, straight, so you, it is not uh, reflecting. But when you tilt, you have uh, then it's perpendicular, and you actually see the the end fiber layer here. Now, why we don't see, you know, the uh, in that area the vessel is just because it's not reflecting. So. Just going back to uh, what uh, Katie just showed us, a very nice case. And you see here, it can be interpreted like a choroidal vascularization. This is a, a vascular area, so you should not see vessel. But in fact, these vessels are visible just because uh, you see the reflectivity here change. Now it's more reflective, and you see the, reflective, uh, the reflection sorry, from the, of the retinal vessels in a deeper layer. So the artifact is actually a big problem. And uh, you see this nice case of uh, two choroidal vascularization. I can show you the, you know, the OCT, there is fluid, so everybody diagnosed as a choroidal vascularization. Of course, I'm not I told you, I'm a multimodality imaging supporter, so I, I will not stop on uh, looking at angio CTs. I actually start to see in details uh, this area, and you see that there is some, uh, uh, you know, uh, increased signal here that probably is due to the fact that you have lack of uh, RPE. But now, if we look at the autofluorescence, yes, we have lack of RPE. So it's uh, just RPE atrophy. And because of that, the fluorescein and, and ICG are more visible, but actually what you see is the choriocapillary that is better seen. And there is no coronal vascularization. Of course, it's a round shape, looks like a very nice and fine net, but it's not. It's just the choriocapillary. Okay, and uh, as Cathy uh, uh, suggests, this is a very nice paper. And if you want to go through um, you know, all the artifacts that you can actually see in uh, angio CTs, or probably some of the artifacts, you can actually read this nice paper. Now, what we have to keep in mind when we uh, interpret, uh, uh, you know, an angio CTs, different segmentation layers, different speed, and the absence of feeling. Now, speaking about the different segmentation layers, just look at the images and just look always where the slab is located. And you see that, uh, you know, the coronal vascularization all of a sudden appears much better. Uh, and uh, the other thing is quite interesting, and then I will show you uh, in, uh, in the last uh, uh, slides here. You see that uh, you expect to see the lesion much better here. 
because uh, f from a structural point of view, I would say that uh, the coronal vascularization is here. But in fact, the best visualization is deeper. And this is why, uh, if, if this is due to the fact that we are actually using the projection artifact to see much better the, the coronal vascularization. So there is no a correlation, and we, the only interpretation is that, that, uh, you know, uh, where we actually see much better the, the coronal vascularization, not where we expect to be uh, looking at the structural OCTs. And the other thing that can change, you see, same patient, just changing the thickness of slab, you actually see that the lesion can be different in this way, or um, the same with a different instrument in this way. And you see that the contrast can be the problem. Sometimes it's higher, so easy to detect. Sometimes it's lower and more difficult to detect. The other interesting thing is that when it come out for the first time, uh, and this is a choroidal vascularization, inflammatory choroidal vascularization, and you know, uh, you know the, the, the difference between fluorescein and ICG. Fluorescein fluoresce more the, the things that are feel of the dye in that moment close to your eyes. ICG is actually depending on the column of dye. So if you have more dye, more column, it's more fluorescent, but not the other part. Now here, looking at this image, I would say that this is actually uh, thicker than this one. Now, when uh, the angio CTs come out for the first time, everybody was saying, well, here the flow is higher than not here. But how can it be? You know, you have just two time points. How can you measure the difference in the flow? It's impossible. And in fact, if you look at Claire carefully, you're just putting a different uh, position of your slab, and you see that the, the uh, you know, um, uh, white part of a lesion change, and this is actually exactly what we saw in ICG. This is a double uh, layer. This is one layer. So you see more fluorescent in ICG and less in another part different speed. Kathy already showed us, you know, a very nice cases of uh, branch vein occlusion, uh, uh, microamines in, in diabetes. And you see if we have, uh, it's not easy to get uh, a very sharp uh, fluorescent angiography like this one. So the big advantage of uh, angiocytes is that uh, you can actually get uh, a very high contrast image and it doesn't matter if you, uh, w you know, if you uh, pay a lot of attention of the early, early phases with a lot of technique, uh, you know, uh, to, to get a, a very early fluorescein. But if we compare side by side, we actually see some differences that are, Kathy already shows us. You know, the, the macroaneurysms here are not visible. This one is visible, probably due to the different flow in, uh, in the, in the macroaneurysms. Remember at the beginning, if you have a slow flow, you don't see anything. If you have a fast slow, you don't, uh, uh, flow, you don't see anything. Now, but look at this vessel. It's very visible in fluorescein. It's missing there. So, Katie already showed us a very nice case where after treatment, one was visible and the other was not and vice versa. So, it's true, it's an artifact. And the microaneurysm, you show, uh, you know, a very nice example of, uh, of uh, a microaneurysm visible in angiocytes. This is a very nice example of not visible in uh, microaneurysm in angiocytes. And uh, what about coronal vascularization? Uh, we know that, uh, you know, the polypoidal lesion and the slow filling, and you see here the polyps that is filling very slowly. And if we, you know, explode the image, here is the polyps, and uh, uh, if you do the, the overlap with the angiocytes, you don't see anything. Too slow. It's not visible. 
So what about the absence of feeling effect? I was almost sure that uh, this was important, but for, you know, just in the last few days, I was uh, able to get a, a very nice uh, movie, and I will uh, run the movie for you. And look at these vessels. You see that you actually see the feeling of the vessels. So it's not true that uh, the angel CTs cannot show the feeling. Pay attention. This is what we get. The movie was obtained because we move uh, the slab down. Okay. And now, why it happens? Because we, we have, uh, you know, such a, a things. With the angel CTs, and so you get, you know, the projection artifacts. So the first part, it's visible in any slab. But we're adding slab by slab. And so you actually have the feeling that there is a feeling, but it's not. So in fact, this is a nice uh, ICG. And if you want to see the feeder and the draining, it's very easy to detect. Well, easy. It depends on the cases, but usually you can get. With a, a you know, a, a, an angel CT is a nice, uh, by the way, a Heidelberg uh, image, but of course you cannot, first of all, compare with fluorescein because uh, I'm not showing exactly the same things. If we want to see the anatomy, we have to look at the ICG, and the ICG is absolutely perfect. It's overlapping, but which is the artery, which is the vein. Just some cases. This is a... a um, patient with uh, angioid streaks was followed for the other eye with a coronal vascularization for probably 10 years. And all of a sudden, he was complaining also in the left eye to have something. So that is uh, uh, the OCT. And you see some uh, probably fluid. The fluorescein, you know, it's leaking here, it's leaking there. It's not easy to detect. Early phases not clear. ICG, of course I don't show you the movie because it will be probably a little bit easier, but you can detect the choroidal vascularization. There is a trick and I can tell you that it's visible, but I will show you later. First of all, I will, you know, the late phases, nothing in particular. Now, if you look at the angiocytes, it's clear. This is a choroidal vascularization. Now, if we show, you know, side by side, the ICG and the angiocytes, you actually see the, if you look at the choroidal vessel, the normal choroidal vessel, you see that all of a sudden something is covering, and that is this part of the choroidal vascularization. So you can actually see also in ICG, you have to be a little more uh, skilled for, for uh, getting an ICG because uh, there is less contrast than not what you get with an angio CTs. So the big advantage is, is having an eye contrast. Um, another case, a uh, patient with, uh, you know, subtle uh, um, uh, retinal pigment patina detachment, some uh, uh, hyperreflective material there, visible fluorescein, the ICG is clear, you have uh, such a huge component here and probably something here. And if you look at the angio CTs, you see the classic, uh, sorry, the, yeah, well, I would say the classic component here and the old component there. And of course, here it's a matter of where you locate your, your, uh, your uh, slab and uh, you can actually see better, you know, the, the, the vessels. And you see, depending on where you cut, and this here, with the comparison with ICG, uh, the lesion is there. Now, what I'm actually think it's very useful is to differentiate macular atrophy. And I will show you why. You know, we, everything started some years ago when we observed in ICG, using ICG, the late phase of ICG, uh, what we call dark atrophy that was typical of uh, Stargardt, late onset Stargardt disease. Comparing with, uh, sorry, 
comparing with uh, AMD, where we actually see a kind of isofluorescent, uh, you know, between the central part of atrophy and the surrounding area. At that time, we actually interpret that, uh, you know, the ICG was like that because of lack of choriocapillary. And now, why Stargard has lack of choriocapillary not in AMD, but we actually uh, can think exactly probably the opposite. Now, if we look at the OCT of these two patients, you see that the thickness of the OCT is, the, is almost the same. And in the study, we actually show that Stargard has thicker choroid than not uh, in, uh, in AMD. But so why there is no choriocapillary? Now, lucky enough, the, the angio OCTs came out, and uh, we actually had the opportunity to do the same study, adding, you know, the choriocapillary uh, visualization with angio CTs. Now, before going to show the results, I have to explain how we interpret the angio CTs in, in uh, geographic atrophy. So, uh, sorry, in macro atrophy. Here it's a patient with Stargard, and you see, of course, the autofluorescent area of lacking RP and area with RP. Now, if we overlap in angiocities, we actually see something quite interesting. You know, the cor huge choroidal vessels are dark and all of a sudden became white. Now, just a, 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 a something that I, I want to underline. You know, the, the first interpretation of a, a vessel, a, a huge choroidal vessel dark, was that uh, the flow was too fast. And so you cannot see anything inside. Now, that was done uh, in an engineering department, uh, done by engineers, and that was their interpretation. Lucky enough, we have pathology. And sometimes pathology can help us to interpret much better the, the images. Now, how can it be that uh, the, vest, the flow all of a sudden slow down, doesn't make any sense. And in fact, this is not the explanation why we see dark and white. Now, if we go to the angiobi scan here, the flow, and here the structural OCT, and again, remember the same light that we use for the spectra, for the structure is the same for the, for the angiobi scan. So, you see these two vessels, same size. Here there is still the RP. Here is RP is missing. You see that the light is penetrating this one, is not penetrating this one. So of course, this would be visible, white. The other would be dark. So easy. Now, why we have a white between the huge choroidal vessels. This is not, uh, you know, the place where we expect uh, vessels. So why is white between the two vessels here? Why is this is white? This is due to the fact that we have the projection artifact of the choriocapillary. So the choriocapillary project the signal deeper. And because of that, we have here a white image. So if we go back to the, uh, our angio CTs, so we have uh, here, uh, you know, the uh, choriocapillary, dark vessel because the RP is uh, attenuating the signal. Here we have uh, the white vessel and no choriocapillary because between vessels there is no white, it's dark. So that is due to the fact there is no projection artifact. However, if we look here, you see that here we have uh, the white vessels, but in between there is white. So it could be that uh, there is still choriocapillary there. And then our interpretation, you see, if you go back to the ICG, you actually see that there is a, here the RP was uh, present, here was absent, and you see that the fluorescent is uh, uh, still some fluorescent here and dark in the central part. So the interpretation, sorry, the interpretation of uh, this uh, white, some uh, lights and, and dark area 
is actually can be like that, you know, RP and so choriocapillary. When RP is missing, but still the choriocapillary, we don't still don't know. We are doing a, a, a follow-up, so we, we don't know how long it takes to disappear the choriocapillary. And then we have uh, no RP, no choriocapillary, and it's dark. In AMD, we still have some RP cells. So we still have some, uh, you know, choriocapillaries and subtle layer. Now, just to show some example, this is another uh, Stargard patient, and you see the uh, blue autofluorescence, the ICG, the dark, and here, you know, the angiocytes. Quite clear, very well visible, but huge choroidal vessels, white. Now, this is AMD. And you see that uh, the AMD, you don't see the huge choroidal vessel because there are probably some choriocapillaries and subtle layer that is masking the, the huge choroidal vessels. Now, of course, you can say, well, your interpretation can be right or wrong, but we need histology. And uh, lucky enough, uh, we have, uh, thanks to Jerry Luti and uh, Joanna Seddon, we have some uh, sample for AMD. And uh, Jerry was uh, actually able to create a new uh, um, um, stain for uh, endothelial cells, so you can actually see the vessel or not. And here, you know, the area of atrophy that we expand, and you see that uh, if we take the central part of atrophy, it's not the same patient, but looks similar to the angiocytes image that I showed you before. Now, the same things for, uh, for uh, Stargardt. And uh, if we, uh, thanks to Jerry and Joe Olifield, you see this is a Stargardt patient, and you see that there is no vessel choriocapillary in the central part of, uh, of atrophy. So it's quite convincing, at least to us, that uh, you know, a, a differential diagnosis can be done with an angiocytes. And I, and I think if you, if you start to think about you know, the, all the clinical trial um, with new drugs, with uh, if you want to put uh, some uh, cells, RPE cells in the center of atrophy, I will never put in the center of atrophy. I will put at the edge where the choriocapillary is still there. And, uh, and you probably can actually see where you want to inject because uh, you can actually see where the choriocapillary is still present. So in conclusion, OCT and geography uh, is a new imaging tool, of course. We are still in the learning curve, and I think the three of us has a probably show you know, the doubts that, that we have uh, in, uh, in the angiocities, but I think it's a, it's a very honest way to, I think, to approach a, a new uh, angiography. Uh, I'm always afraid of uh, the fashion, in, uh, if, if, even if I'm an Italian, but the fashion for, uh, for in medicine is dangerous. You know, forget all the rest because uh, only the new things are, are important. I don't think so. I think it's... Uh, we have to take uh, the good part of anything. And uh, then, uh, uh, you know, I think, uh, as I told you with the last uh, uh, few slides, the multimodal imaging allowed a better di differential diagnosis in, uh, in macular atrophy. And uh, that, I think, uh, will be important, particular for the future. Thank you.